This video, entitled File System Options, will really serve as a gateway for us, and we're going to do maybe, I don't know, four videos or so, and we're going to talk about some of the various file system options in Windows Server 2012. Some of this is kind of refresher material, and then uh, it'll launch us from there over into storage spaces and some of the other new functionalities. So let's start right here. First of all, Sharing files is one of the main purposes of a server-based network, right? It's how we got into this mess to start with. But when we start thinking about actually sharing files from a server, we have a number of configuration decisions that we need to make. Now, Windows Server 2012 has got a lot of different services that can be used to deploy various file system functionalities to make files available to the end users out there or the clients but each one of these services may be impacted by your decisions about the file system options. So let's talk about exactly what's got to happen here to get the file system options all set. Well, once you set up a Windows Server box, now you need to add and configure disks that are going to be used for this purpose of sharing data out to the end users. So the first thing you need to do is choose the type of partition. Is this going to be an MBR or a GPT? Well, don't worry. We're going to talk about MBR or GPT in a separate video. And then what about the disk type? Is this going to be a basic disk or a dynamic disk? Now, this has been around, I guess, since Windows, I don't know, 2000, 2003, something like that. But people still get confused over it because you only look at this once every few months when you're adding a new disk, okay? so. We'll dig into that a little bit later on in a separate video as well. Then what about the volume? Is this going to be a simple volume or a spanned volume? What's the difference? Again, we'll do a separate video and talk about that. Then you need to determine the format type on that volume. FAT, FAT32, NTFS, and so forth. So you have quite a few decisions to make here when it comes to setting up your file system. And we're going to move through these step by step going to jog some things that you learned probably a few years ago that you may have forgotten about, but you will see this information on the exam in a number of different formats. Again, you're not going to get a question, what is GPT? You're going to get a scenario where GPT would work, and it would be the answer to the problem there. So you need to understand what GPT is, obviously. So we'll start to wade into these things, and we'll go through these step by step and get you ready for this aspect of this 70-410 exam.